Hi there. This is Lise Zadrebeck. I am an artist and welcome to Start Lunch with the Arts. I am a Loudoun County artist. I have lived and worked and taught here for over 25 years. My primary medium is colored pencil and you probably noticed behind me some familiar colored pencil pieces that have won awards at Waterford and um, locally and beyond, internationally and online. Um, I'm a signature member of the Color Pencil Society of America and the Color Pencil Community of Australasia and um, also the president currently of the Loudon Sketch Club. And I teach with Yellow Barn and from my home and basically now I teach online. So um, I'm, I'm kind of everywhere. Um, I wanted to talk about my medium of colored pencil. I like to draw people, as you can see. I like to draw animals too. They do help the story along um, and have stories of their own, like the one of the cat there with the bonfire. They always have stories um, and not always just my stories. They can be the stories that you see in the pictures. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about some of the materials I've been working with lately. So I'm going to switch cameras. And I also wanted to give you a bit of a little demonstration. Excuse me for turning off my camera for a second while I switched it over to what I'm working on now. Um, <clears throat> actually, this is the one I just finished of our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, and this one that I'm working on of a Pine Martin. I am going to raise my camera up just a tiny bit so that hopefully you can see the whole thing here um, a little bit better, a little bit more of my composition. And uh, I've been working on a lot of animals here. Here's a bunny and my cat that I'm working on, and some mice. Um, this one I'm doing of the mice is on what's called pastel board. It has a nice texture to it, and it's a solid board. Um, it makes the colored pencils react differently, and sometimes when you work on these other surfaces, rather than having to keep your work under plexi or glass, you can expose it right to the elements like an oil painting. This one was done on an encaustic board, which was a little different to work with. It's very cold. Encaustic works with wax and a lot of heat. Um, it is also very um, receptive to the colored pencils because they have wax in them. So it was receptive to them, and at the same time, it was cold, and I like my colored pencils to warm up a bit. But you see that because it's on the board, I'm able to varnish it, and then I'll be able to display that in a frame. And my fox here. Now behind me, there was a car wing, and I was going to give a little demonstration or discussion on um, how you can take a picture that you like, and you can either color on the back with um, a pencil and just color it, get a nice soft pencil and just color the whole thing in with graphite so that you have a transfer sheet. Or it is possible to purchase the transfer sheets. This one is by Speedball, um, nice of me to hold it right side up, Mona Lisa graphite paper. It's like the old carbon paper, but it's graphite, just like your pencil. And you lay that down, and you lay your picture down, and then you want to tape it into place with some masking tape so that nothing moves until you're done. And then I take a pencil of a color so that I can see where I have transferred it and trace along and I can see if I've gotten all the lines. So if there's a picture that you want, you can see I made some changes to this picture 
um, I wanted the to enlarge the wing, but you could just transfer it exactly as it is. And then after you're done, your transfer your image is transferred on here, and you can see I just started to color. But this way, I've told people, even if you just like to color in coloring books, transfer your image to a nice sheet of paper, and then you can do your beautiful coloring and shading, even if it's just flat coloring, like a coloring book, although we want to learn to shade and do special effects. I'm starting with the sky back here. Um, even if we're, we're just doing the flat coloring, it will be like your own piece of art when you're done. So that's a way to, to uh, transfer it. I'm sorry, once I start coloring, my brain just goes, it's just so nice and therapeutic. I have the best job in the world. I get to color for a living. And so now when you get into all these details of light and shadow and reflection of the sky and everything else that's going on in your picture, of course you wanna add some beautiful shading. Um, I was also going to show you a little technique on drawing some fur because a lot of times we wanna draw animals and it's a little more intricate than just the flat coloring in with a little shading that we were doing on the um, car. This animal is a pine marten. I also did this fox. Now the fox we're more familiar with because, and I do have it so close because I do want you to be able to see what I'm doing um, to get all of this very realistic fur going. We want to uh, learn what a fur technique is. This is a pine marten. It's maybe similar to a weasel. We don't have them here in Virginia. Um, it is in colder foresty areas. So I've put it in its little pine forest um, environment. Now what you want to do with when you're when you're shading to get a fur texture is a similar layering, but not pressing down right away. You can see here that I am shading lightly with some of the lighter orangey colors. And then what I do is I go in with a very, very, very small eraser. Now this one is called Mono Tombow Zero and it pops out just like a, a mechanical pen. And if you take a, an X-Acto blade, you can slice off the end of it and get a nice clean end. And I'm getting down to the end of this one. So hopefully there's enough in here. And get a nice sharp end to it. And I go in and I make actual pencil erasing. What this does is it's not I'm putting down and then I'm erasing away and putting down and erasing away for no purpose. It creates sort of a warp and weave to the paper, kind of the way a watercolor paper has the laid um, how the pulp is laid and so it has, if it's a, a um, cold press, it has a nice warp to the weave of the paper. Then when you take your other colors, which they're always other colors, the pencil point sort of finds its way in between. and you get the lighter colors and the darker colors laying next to each other in a way that begins to resemble, more and more resemble fur. And this is done very lightly. None of this is done with a um, heavy hand so that um, 
it, it builds up in layers. A lot of times people just want to draw one layer of fur and that's enough, but this is a way to get all of those layers done. There's, there's really layers and layers and layers of fur. There's new fur coming up underneath and old fur sticking out and so many colors in it that you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even guess. I sometimes use a very pink pencil. It looks very pink and almost fleshy and it really brings something out in the fur. And sometimes in the more shadowy areas, I use a very purple pencil, which contrasts very well to the um, orange fur. And that way, this area in here, for instance, you can now see that I'm holding the pencil next to it. Lots and lots and lots of the purple that exists in there. And because it contrasts so nicely with the orange, it makes the orange pop. Um, so now I'm just about moving into the area of the tail as my last final and a few more pine needles and I'll be done with the little pine marten who's hiding behind his tail. But it's going to take patience and working slowly. And as you see, just a love of detail. If you do colored pencil, you love detail. I like my colored pencils to look like paintings, but I also love the fact that I can come in and draw in every single eyelash. So it's just a, um, a love of detail and a love of texture that makes you want to use this medium. It is always 100% artist's quality pigment in a stick. And just like oil paint, it's held there with a waxy oil binder. So when you're painting with oil paint, you're painting with a real artist pigment and then on your brush and your medium is, you know, oil, wax, whatever it is, even paint thinners, which by the way can be used in this too. Um, in the bunny, for instance, for the background, because I was working with the problems of working on the encaustic board, I used a little of the 91% alcohol um, to kind of melt down the pigment of the, of the color pencil. And then it kind of goes on a little more like paint. And then you can come back in and draw your details. So it really does make it a painting and then coming in with the, the detail that you can get in the eye and in the fur, which can only happen with a pencil point. So this is something that I love to do. I absolutely love to draw the cute little faces of animals. Here's my cat that's coming up, my bunny. They're like my little stories. And even this car, I'm just gonna have a lot of fun with it, like the car that's um, over here behind me. um that i did in red oh i don't think you can see it i will turn my camera just slightly there it is there it is i had a lot of fun doing that don't know where that fits into my life but then there's a story to the the pink glass pitcher that's next to it um, that i call beauty and emptiness and that is a yoga thing so here we are in the midst of our strange and wonderful quarantine time. Pull out your colored pencils and color. You can do something as simple as coloring in a book and as intricate as drawing the detail of fur. You can um, take pictures from your coloring book and transfer them now that you know how to do that. And if you forgot what I said, you can go to my website and um, there's, a, there's a video on uh, how to transfer an image on there. And that is www.leasarts.com, L-I-S-A-R-T-S. And thank you for watching. Pull out your color pencil and color.
it's the most fun you can have making art.